Hello my friends who are listening to eBird Online and I'm back with another review. And today we're going to chart the success or lack thereof of Christian and Cleo. Christian flew to London last week to meet Cleo for the very first time. And this week, well, he seems to be making waves with the locals. But first let's go back to last week. And right before they met, Cleo had some very well-founded worries. His family had a bit of a reaction after finding out that I'm trans. I feel super worried about it because how am I going to be able to be part of his family? Knowing how close Christian is to his family, I really do worry how that is going to impact our relationship. So thus far, Christian's been very gung-ho about their relationship and he's actually said her being trans doesn't faze him at all and he'll just deal with whatever he has to deal with. But his parents managed to find out from some family members who since then have been on his back saying, we think this is a bad idea and more or less, what in God's name do you think you're doing? So then we had a very unfortunate but all too predictable one-two switcheroo from Christian. He actually asked Cleo if it would be okay when he met her at the airport if he didn't hug her, kiss her or have any physical contact in public. You guys didn't talk about it? Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, I kind of like just was like, you know, would would it be alright if like we just kind of like feel everything out, you know, to start? And she just definitely weirded out. It kind of threw her, threw her for a loop a little bit. Uh, what? You go from calling it a relationship and calling her your girlfriend to saying, I don't want to kiss or touch you in public. Wow, just wow. But I wish that were the only problem between these two. This video is also going to look at Christian's lack of knowledge about autism and what it encompasses. And also, are these two even equally yoked? Christian's extremely outgoing and Cleo's extremely reserved. Yes, guys, it's 90 Day Fiancé, Before the 90 Days, Season 6, Episode 6 and 7. And we're talking about Christian and Cleo. But guys, just before we begin, thank you so much to everyone who's subscribed to my channel. I'm walking slowly, but yet purposefully, towards that 50,000 subscriber mark. But if you've yet to do so, and there's many of you out there, please consider subscribing. It really would help me out. And also, if you know anybody else who might enjoy my videos, please consider sharing. And also, don't forget to smash that like button. Thanks, guys. Right, so without further ado, I give you Christian and Cleo. So when we first meet up with Cleo... She is getting ready to meet a non-tactile Christian at the airport and she tells production that she's serving fish. Upon being asked what exactly that meant, she said I'm serving cisgender woman realness. And guys, it took me a little while to work it out, but fish? <laughs> it's quite disgusting. In the taxi, she's extremely pensive about meeting Christian as well she might be. And she lets us know she's got her neurodivergent paraphernalia to help her at the airport. She's got her noise cancelling headphones and her sunflower lanyard. Oh god, Cleo, the last time I looked, a lanyard can't protect you. From an attention-seeking, egotistical, smug-as-all-hell 30-year-old who describes himself as straight as fuck. And so as Christian disembarks the plane, he says to production, what happens if I see her and there's no attraction at all? I'm really worried. But guys, when they saw each other, although it was slightly clunky, he did go over and embrace her and he gave her a kiss. And she said to him, I didn't think that was going to happen. And the truth be told, neither did I. But then, cue the awkwardness. And it wasn't from Christian, it was from Cleo. She was being super self-deprecating and the first thing she said was this. Sorry if I'm super tall today. No, it's fine. The taller they are the higher I climb. <laughs> Cleo, don't apologise for being you for being tall. But if you must, then perhaps don't wear heels. But it just makes me think that Cleo's worrying about every little thing and she's leaning into negative trans stereotypes. She's virtually giving Christian the out. And if that wasn't quite enough, she followed up with this. It's so cute. Like, oh my God, it's totally out of my league. Wow, thank you. That's really sweet Sorry, to I'm say, babe. It's cool. Cleo serving fish lesson numero uno. Never ever tell a man he's out of your league. He won't want you. He wants someone out of his league. You're basically handing him all the cards. Now ladies, in fact, and guys, what must men feel in order to give everything to you? They must feel you're the best thing since sliced bread. Any erosion of this ideal leaves them thinking, well, maybe I could do better. Maybe I will do better. In fact, I'm definitely going to do better uh, you, get out of my life now. I never ever want to see you again. And what did Christian do? Well, he just accepted the compliment. Ergo, he tacitly agrees. Problem, big problem. And so they travel back to Cleo's Airbnb. But in the taxi, things are rather uncomfortable. 
and Christian actually says, Now I've met Cleo in person, things are a little awkward. And guys, this doesn't bode well. This is Christian, the guy who says he can get on with everybody and anybody. According to Christian, he can charm the knickers off a nun. <laughs> it's unsurprising that Cleo's a bit awkward. She's neurodivergent, so I guess this is part and parcel of who she is. But as for Christian, well, it's very interesting. And so they finally arrive at Cleo's place. And they tend to the cat. And they give the cat dreamies. Guys, don't do it. Dreamies are more Moorish than crack. Well, that's what my cat thinks. And so Christian said he's tired and he wants to go to bed. And Cleo shows him to the bedroom. And Christian lets production know he's worried about intimacy with Cleo. So Christian wants to take his time. What does Cleo want? Well, she lets us know. But what I worry about, his ability to be affectionate and that he might not find me as attractive as, you know, he says. I do hope I'm just overthinking, but it will be worrying if this doesn't change within, you know, a day. Uh, what? A day? He has 24 hours to start being affectionate to you. It's 24 hours in Cleo's custody. Let the clock start ticking. Guys, I've got to say, I think this is a tad unfair. If this was a guy saying to a woman, I expect something from you in terms of intimacy within 24 hours, we'd be up in arms. You've never met each other before. So to me, Cleo giving Christian 24 hours to be intimate is manifestly unfair. And so the following morning, the couple talk about what happened the night before. Apparently they had a bit of hugging and snuggling, but Cleo lets production know that she was really unhappy because she expected a lot more affection than she got from Christian. Well, by my reckoning, he's got about 17 hours to go to show her intimacy. So what does Cleo do next? I kind of need to get my juice on. What? Look at topical estrogen gel. You just put it on your arm. Really? Yeah. That's so strange. Like... Yep, there's nothing like telling him about all the drugs you have to take on a daily basis to bring about the intimacy you so crave. And then Christian pretends to be worried about what this might mean for him. One of the things that, you know, really attracted me to Cleo's personality was how open she is about her identity. But now that we're here in person, I feel a little bit out of my element. Seeing Cleo put on her estrogen gel, you know, I don't know a whole lot about it. If I, you know, try to touch her, if it rubs off on me, you know, like, I'm not sure whether or not it's something that I have to be careful of. It's a little uncomfortable. Oh, come on now, Christian. Cleo's just explained to you that after two to three minutes, it dries and it cannot transfer to anybody else. And so there's nothing to worry about. But it's as if Christian didn't hear what she said or didn't believe what she said. And now he's trepidatious. And so the couple spend the day walking around central London, looking at landmarks, Big Ben, Westminster Cathedral, Buckingham Palace and so on. And then they decide to go to the river and get a drink in a bar. And so Cleo lets Christian know that she feels very comfortable when there's not too many people around. And they have a couple of drinks and they even share a kiss. And then Christian told Cleo that he was sorry he wasn't more physical last night and that he was really jet lagged and tired and it wasn't because he didn't fancy her. And guys, what was Cleo's response to this? You might well ask. No, don't worry. I wouldn't have slept with you on the first night anyway. Okay. Uh, what? <laughs> Cleo, 17 and a half hours ago, you were giving him 24 hours to become intimate with you and you were gagging for it. Oh, good Lord. Both of these two live in fantasy land. And then Christian said he's very relieved to hear that she's a classy broad. Guys, I pretty much think he's hoping this class will last for, well, about two weeks. I think I can pretty much tell already he ain't in this. I just don't think he fancies her. I don't feel he's invested. And I'm also trying to work out at the moment if he's slow, like mentally slow. I think he might be because he said, ever since I've got here, Cleo has been really shy. I wanted to get a few drinks in her and see she'll just let loose. Oh, guys... Christian, she's not shy. She's neuro-fucking-divergent. She has autism. She doesn't do well in crowds and in busy places, although she has seen fit to go and live in London. But I digress. She told you all of this before you even came. Guys, according to Christian, autism can be completely cured by a couple of glasses of fucking whiskey and a really cool bar. Well, have fun trying to get in anywhere cool, Christian. I think you'll find you might have quite a bit of trouble. And to make things worse, he then said, Normally I like to go out, have a few drinks, do a bit of karaoke, then I like to go dancing. Do you enjoy dancing, Cleo? You already know the answer. She can barely walk in those bloody heels. How do you think she would be dancing? It would be like watching Bambi drunk on ice skates. Don't be silly, Christian. 
And Cleo said, uh, no, I can't say I do like to dance. But you can tell that Christian's the kind of guy, once he's got it in his head, well, he won't take no for an answer and he wants to go off to a busy, busy bar. So this mismatched couple head out into the night in search of a more lively bar. Now they're on the river at the moment and by my reckoning, I think they're in between Tower and London Bridge. Wise? Although I can't work out why London Bridge is purple, it's never been purple to my knowledge. Bizarre. Oh god guys, I've only been gone 10 minutes. And it's all change. But anyway, they're fairly central, so there are absolutely loads of cool places to go nearby. And guys, I for one am wondering, where will they end up? The cab's pulling up at a, well, a cooler bar. They walk in and I instantly realise it's not cool at all. It's absolutely perfect for Christian. And guys, I've got to say, the inside of this bar looks like, well, a Russian tourist's handbag after 45 minutes on Oxford Street. There's everything here. There's bunting. There are flags, ribbons, baubles, fake flowers, tinsel. You name it, it's on the bloody ceiling. It's as if someone's eaten the contents of Hobbycraft and puked it up into this bar. Oh, guys, I'm just clocking. <gasps> okay, I take it back, I take it back. I get the bunting. I think it's when the Queen died. Okay, yeah, I get it. It is. It's when the Queen died. And I'll tell you what else I get. That was London Bridge. I guess that's why it was purple. It's beginning to make sense. Okay, so I retract my earlier scathing comments about the bar. So anyway, the couple sit down and they order drinks. Guys, here's how the drinks were served. Ah, <sighs> I reinstate my earlier comments. This place is so try-hard. Cleo points out to production that the place isn't very autism friendly. And she says there's a lot going on. As if to demonstrate this, the cameraman pans round at super fast speed across everybody in the bar. Oh, cameraman. <laughs> You're not fooling anybody. <laughs> I think I've got better editing skills than these clowns. But guys, just scrolling through Little Nans, which is what the bar is called, website and social media. I see producers have outdone themselves this time in finding the least autistic friendly bar in London. I've never heard of this place and it's somewhere called Deptford, which is kind of a little bit out of the way. Certainly nowhere near where they were on the river. So yeah, I kind of think this has been done somewhat purposefully. Anyway, the couple sip their cocktails and they continue their stilted and awkward conversation. And all the time I can see on Cleo's face that she's very aware that Christian's only got about, what, six or seven hours to go. Six or seven hours to provide intimacy. <laughs> no chance. Christian looks around the bar with that usual I'm so pleased with myself look on his face. And then he said to Cleo, I've got a crazy story for you. Crazy Christian, is it really? Let's hear it then. So when Christian was on the plane, he was bored and he was drunk. And as he wandered around the plane in the wee small hours, he happened across two young girls. And so he sat down and started chatting shit, as he does. And he said they were talking for a while, and he was completely buzzed. But they didn't seem as if they had any drinks. So he asked them if they wanted a nightcap. And without waiting to receive an answer, he ran to the back of the plane and asked the flight attendant for three drinks. And then the flight attendant said, uh, I've heard about you, no drinks. And he said, how weird was that? Yes, it's weird, but not crazy. You said it was crazy. Middle-aged man wanders over to two 21-year-olds. Somehow, guys, he knew their age. Sits down unsolicited and drunkenly slurs at them for half an hour and then offers them drinks. One of two things happened. Either A, news of a ginger pest from the Midwest had already travelled round the plane like wildfire and they were ready for him. Or, and I think this is rather more likely... As soon as you left to go and get the drinks, they pressed the button, spoke to the flight attendant over the intercom and said, if some weird guy comes down and asks for three alcoholic drinks, don't give them to him. We would like him to go away. And Cleo was looking dumbfounded. She can't quite believe what she's heard. And Christian went, well, I'll talk to anybody. Yes, we know Christian. The question is, do they want to talk to you? Well, we know that as well. No, they bloody don't. And then Christian said to Cleo, are you upset that I was talking to younger girls on the plane? Christian, why are you emphasising younger girls? There's the implicit insinuation there that there's, I don't know, some defect on the part of a woman who's with her partner and doesn't want him to talk to other women. It's only because they're younger women and she's jealous. No, you're embarrassing yourself and ergo me. So Cleo said that she would be embarrassed if she were there. And Christian said, I'd never do it whilst you're there. But why does Christian do this? Well, he's got a theory. Well, I feel like you do it all the time. 
I make friends anywhere I go. I'm just kind of like magnetic in that way. I mean, I'll talk to anybody, you know what I'm saying? He's magnetic. Magnets draw other matter towards them. I think you'll find you're parasitic, not magnetic. You inveigle your way into a group of people, and then you latch on. And then, just moments after saying, I'd never do it if you were there, Cleo, this happened. Hey, excuse me, excuse me. Are you guys, like, celebrating something tonight? Your birthday? 26. 26? Awesome. And then he told the girls, hi, I'm Christian from the Midwest. And then he said, I know you all think that Americans are all like cowboys and we ride horses and we wear 10 gallon hats. This is why I question whether Christian's slow or not. That's the kind of shit five-year-olds thought in the 1960s. FYI, Christian, it's more likely that when you say, I'm Christian from the Midwest, people think, oh, you're a Trump supporter. And then when you say, I'm Christian from the Midwest and I'm here with my trans girlfriend, they think, oh, you're a secret Biden supporter. <laughs> <laughs> he can't let his parents know not that he's going out with a trans girl but that he's a secret biden supporter so anyway christian said cleo pull up a chair and cleo said i can't i'm autistic i feel really out of my depth and christian said something like loosen up she can't she's autistic guys it's giving special needs it is, it's giving special needs. Something's wrong with Christian. I just need to go back home. I got you, I totally got you. Well, all right, my friends, happy birthday. Thank you. Have a good night, ladies. Have a good night. Have a good night. And finally, Cleo managed to drag him away, and off they went home. And I think it's just as well that he part now. Christian's only got about half an hour left to give Cleo intimacy. Remember, guys, she said 24 hours. Time's a ticking. And as they exit the bar, Christian's wearing a look that says... I'm so magnetic. I'm the life and soul of the party. People just have to be around me. And Cleo's wearing a look that says, Where's my lanyard? Where's my sunflower lanyard? Where are my noise-cancelling headphones? Where's my paraphernalia, guys? I need my neurodivergent paraphernalia. These two are as different as chalk and cheese. It can't work. I'm not sure if Christian even fancies Cleo at all. I think for Christian this is just a, I don't know, a foible. I think he's busy cultivating eccentricities to throw us off the scent that he's a boring fuck. Yeah, did I tell you guys about the time that I got married in an Elvis chapel in Vegas and got it annulled a week later? And did I tell you about the time when I met a trans girl online? I went to London for two weeks to meet her, but it was not to be. And I can imagine him regaling this story badly, I might add. He's no witty raconteur. But yeah, that's his game, I think. But I think what I'm hoping for from this relationship is that Cleo realises he's not the man for her and she sends him packing. Now that I'd love to see, because it would really burst his bubble. So guys, let me know what you think. Do you think Christian's being unfair by labelling Cleo's autism as shyness? <laughs> Have a drink, you'll cure it. And what do we think with Cleo's ultimatum? 24 hours for intimacy? Really? Chloe, you're a pre-op trans girl. Surely you realise this may pose some problems for Christian. And then finally, do we even think Christian fancies Cleo? I don't think he does. I think he's far more in love with the idea of an adventure. So guys, please let me know in comments down below what you think, and I'll get on with my next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, all of that good stuff. And if you know anyone that would enjoy this video, please share it. You've been listening to eBird Online, and I bid you good day. But I don't